Hello everyone and welcome to Stimulus Academy. So the topic that we'll be discussing today are uh, very three important uh, structures of uh, endocrine system. Uh, those are hypothalamus, pituitary and pineal gland. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So with that, now let's start with the topic. So first we'll be taking up hypothalamus. Okay. So now hypothalamus is the uh, basal part of diencephalon and diencephalon is uh, for brain. Okay. So hypothalamus is the basal part of forebrain okay now uh, as the name says it, uh, that hypothalamus so uh, hypo that is below thalamus that is a uh, basal part of forebrain okay now because it is a part of endocrine gland so of course there will be some secretory cells okay so hypothalamus is made up of a group of neurosecretory cells neuro means it is related somehow related to the neural system and secretory means it is somehow related to the endocrine system as well okay so these uh, neurosecretory cells are known as nuclei and these produce hormones okay so now uh, the hormones that are produced by hypothalamus will in turn regulate the functioning of pituitary hormones. How do they regulate it? By synthesis and secretion of pituitary hormones. So the hormones which will be released from the hypothalamus will be affecting the synthesis and secretion of pituitary hormones. Okay. So now uh, there will be two types of hormones that will be released from the hypothalamus depending on their action on the pituitary gland. Okay. The first is releasing hormone and the second is inhibiting hormone. So as the name says, releasing hormone will be re uh, will be uh, leading to the release of uh, pituitary hormones and inhibiting hormones will be inhibiting the pituitary gland. Okay, so for example, GnRH, which is a uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone, so it will be a releasing hormone which will be secreted by the hypothalamus and it will act on pituitary and stimulate pituitary to re release gonadotropin hormone. Okay, so it will uh, lead to the release of gonadotropin. Okay, the second is somatostatin and somatostatin is an inhibitory hormone to growth hormone. Okay, so it will be inhibiting the growth. So somatostatin is an inhibiting hormone and GnRH is a releasing hormone. Okay, so this uh, was the diagram that was given in NCRT. Here we can see that this is a hypothalamus and these are the hypothalamic hormones that is a neurosecretory hormones, so, uh, neurosecretory neurons. So what they'll do is that they are uh, innervating to, they are innervating the pituitary that is the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. Okay, so we'll be discussing about the other, uh, other features of this uh, diagram in our next slides okay so now the uh, the fun like the function of these hypothalamic hormones is to regulate the functions of uh, pituitary okay so uh, the hypothalamus will be regulating pituitary in two ways the first is through hormones and the second is through a uh, neural regulation okay so pituitary is also uh, divided into two parts the first is anterior pituitary here we can see this is the anterior pituitary and this is the posterior pituitary okay so the hormones will be regulating the functions of the anterior pituitary, the hormones through this portal circulation, the hypothalamic neurons, this hypothalamic neuron will release its hormones into this portal circulation. This portal circulation will pull the secretions into the anterior pituitary and thus regulate uh, the functions of anterior pituitary. Okay, so anterior pituitary is under hormonal control and the posterior pituitary is under neural regulation. Okay. So here we can see that this neuron is directly innervating the posterior pituitary. So the posterior pituitary is under neural regulation. Okay. Now, after hypothalamus, we uh, in hypothalamus we have seen that it secretes, it uh, regulates the synthesis and secretion of pituitary hormones. We are going to talk about pituitary. Okay. So now first the location of pituitary. Now pituitary is located in a bony cavity, and this bony cavity is called a cella turcica. Okay. So this pituitary gland is located inside this bony cavity, and this bony cavity is known as cella turcica. Okay. And the pituitary gland is uh, connected to hypothalamus with the help of a stalk. So here we can see that this is the stalk, okay? This is the stalk which is connecting the hypothalamus to the pituitary, okay? So the stalk connects the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Now, uh, the pituitary is divided into two parts. The first is adenohypophysis. The second is neurohypophysis, okay? So pituitary has two parts, adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis. Now, adenohypophysis is also divided into two parts based on its location. The first is pars distalis and the second is pars intermedia, okay? So adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis is further divided into pars distalis and pars intermedia, okay? So now, there are some important features of pars distalis and pars intermedia, okay? So the first is that pars distalis is also known as anterior pituitary. 
uh, and pars intermedia along with pars distalis actually pars intermedia and pars distalis are together known as posterior pituitary okay so pars distalis which is known as the anterior pituitary uh, secretes the following hormones the first is growth hormone then we have prolactin thyroid stimulating hormone tsh which will stimulate the thyroid gland adenocorticotrophic hormone acth luteinizing hormone lh and follicle stimulating hormone fsh okay so these are the hormones which are released from the in, uh, from the anterior pituitary and then we have pars intermedia pars intermedia secretes only one hormone which is melanocyte stimulating hormone msh okay now the pars intermedia is almost merged with the pars distalis okay so basically we will have the following parts of adenohypophysis the first is the pars distalis which is known as anterior pituitary and then we have pars intermedia and pars distalis which are merged together okay so this was all about the adenohypophysis now we are going to talk about the neurohypophysis now neurohypophysis as the name says neuro so it is somehow be related to the nervous system so it is known as pars nervosa okay pars nervosa and just like uh, pars uh, distalis like pars uh, pars distalis was also known as anterior pituitary similarly neurohypophysis is known as posterior pituitary okay so neurohypophysis is known as posterior pituitary and neurohypophysis stores and releases oxytocin and vasopressin which are synthesized by hypothalamus okay so what happens is that hypothalamus secretes two hormones the first is oxytocin and vasopressin which is also known as antidiuretic hormone okay so these two hormones will be secreted by the hypothalamus and then they will be poured into the into these neurons of neurohypophysis okay so this neurohypophysis then will store and release these two hormones oxytocin and vasopressin which are synthesized by the hypothalamus okay now how are these uh, hormones transported from the hypothalamus to neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary this is done with the help of neurons okay so if the transport is with the help of neurons it is known as axonal transport okay so these hormones are transported axonally to neurohypophysis now this was all about the structure of pituitary now we will talk about the hormones that are secreted by pituitary okay so the first is acromegaly okay so acromegaly is basically the we know that anterior pituitary secretes growth hormone okay so acromegaly happens when there is a sudden surge in the uh, growth hormone seen in adults okay if it is seen in children then it leads to gigantism and if it is seen in adults it leads to acromegaly now a very important feature of acromegaly is that there is a disfigurement of the face okay so the cheek bones and the jaw bones of the uh, face are uh, like they protrude out of the face and this leads to disfigurement of the face okay so that is acromegaly it happens because of over secretion of gh in adults okay now another is prolactin we know that prolactin is also secreted by anterior pituitary and the function of prolactin is the growth of mammary glands and the formation of milk so this is the function of prolactin after that we have acth adrenocorticotrophic hormone okay so this adrenocorticotrophic hormone will act on the adrenal gland and it will stimulate the release of steroid hormones glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex so the adrenal gland the adrenal cortex of the adrenal gland will release some glucocorticoids under the influence of this acth hormone which is released from the pituitary okay after that we have lh and fsh luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone so these are the types of gonadotropins which are released from the anterior pituitary anterior pituitary as in pars distalis okay now what is the function of lh and fsh okay so in males lh that is luteinizing hormone stimulates the release of androgen from the testes okay so the uh, lh hormone in males stimulates the release of androgens from the testes and fsh and androgens in the male okay so lh and fsh are released both in males and females in case of males lh performs the function of release of androgens from the testes and androgens and fsh together in males leads to spermato spermatogenesis so they help in the formation of sperms okay and in females the lh hormone it induces ovulation now ovulation is the process in which uh, ova is released so actually what is ova the graafian follicles the mature graafian follicles are released so that process is known as ovulation and lh stimulates this ovulation in females okay also lh helps in the maintenance of corpus luteum what is corpus luteum it is degenerating graafian follicle so lh induces ovulation and it maintains the corpus luteum okay now after lh 
we see what is the role of FSH in females. So in females, FSH is involved in the growth and development of ovarian follicles. So the growth and development of ovarian follicles is done with the help of FSH and the release of these graphene follicles that is ovulation is done with the help of LH. Okay. Now after that we had another hormone which was melanocyte stimulating hormone. It was produced by pars intermedia. Okay. So what is the function of MSH? MSH is melanocyte stimulating hormone. So it will somehow be stimulating the melanocytes. What are melanocytes? Melanocytes are special cells which are present in the skin and they lead to pigmentation. Okay. So melanocyte, it regulates pigmentation and it is produced by, uh, like it, um, it, acts on the mel uh, it acts on melanocytes. Okay. Now we have oxytocin. Now this oxytocin hormone, we studied that it was, it is released by neurohypophysis and it is formed in hypothalamus. So it is produced in hypothalamus, it is transported and stored in neurohypophysis and then it is released. So the function of oxytocin is that it leads to the contraction of uh, uterine muscles, okay. So the contraction of the smooth muscles of the uterus helps in childbirth, okay. So oxytocin helps in childbirth, also it helps in the milk ejection reflex, okay. Then we have vasopressin. Vasopressin is also known as ADH. It is again secreted by the neurohypophysis and it is formed in the pituitary, in the hypothalamus. Okay. So vasopressin acts on the kidney and it helps in diuresis. What is diuresis? Diuresis is the uh, absorption of water from the filtrate and concentration of the urine. Okay. So the main function of ADH or vasopressin is it is anti-diuretic hormone. That is, it prevents the uh, really it prevents like it concentrates the urine okay so it acts on the kidney and concentrates the urine okay now uh, vasopressin is also known as antidiuretic hormone and uh, there is a disease which actually diabetes is of two types the first is diabetes mellitus and then we have diabetes insipidus uh, you uh, like i'll tell you that diabetes mellitus is caused because of deficiency of insulin okay and diabetes insipidus is caused because of the deficiency of adh hormone that is deficiency of vasopressin so because if vasopressin is not released there will be no concentration of urine and if there is there will be no concentration of urine then a large amount of water will be passed with the urine okay so this uh, this defect like this uh, pathological uh, defect is known as diabetes insipidus okay so that was all about the pituitary gland now we move on to the penile gland okay now, penial is a very small gland which is present in the dorsal side of the forebrain. So, dorsal means behind, okay. So, it is present in the dorsal side of the forebrain, okay. And the important function of penial gland is, you have to remember this, that it helps in diurnal rhythm, okay. So, penial glands releases a hormone which is known as melatonin and this melatonin helps in maintaining the diurnal rhythm. What is diurnal rhythm? It is a 24-hour cycle. Our body is accustomed to a cycle uh, like when to eat, when to sleep, everything, okay? So our body is used to a cycle and that cycle is maintained with the help of melatonin which is secreted, which is secreted by the pineal gland, okay? Now, what is diurnal rhythm? The normal rhythms of sleep, cycle, wake cycle, the normal rhythms of body temperature and everything, those are known as a uh, diurnal rhythm or 24 hour rhythm, okay? Now, along with this, along with uh, influencing our diurnal rhythm, the pineal gland also influences the metabolism of the body, the pigmentation of the body, the menstrual cycle and the defense capability of the body. Okay. So this was all about the pineal, all about the pineal gland. I hope that you understood the topic. We covered three important endocrine glands here. The first one is hypothalamus. Then we, uh, then we discussed about pituitary and after that we discussed about pineal gland. I hope that you understood the topic well and thank you.